Good morning, Jeff. Good morning, Nancy. Uh, thank you so much for meeting me again. Uh, it's been a uh, a busy few weeks here, and I'm you know ecstatic to walk through your financial plan with you here today. Um, since the last time we met, uh, at the beginning of the month, so uh, let's you know let's get right into it here. Um, a few things before I dive into the specific part of the plan that I want to um, you know address this morning is. Um, there are a lot of moving parts here, and as a full comprehensive financial plan, it really is quite eye-opening to see um, where your goals lie, what you desire, and uh, overall what's important to you. And I'd say three overarching themes uh, and goals here was the retirement planning, um, and the education, and also the future state and potential sale and transfer of the uh, just business that will have you know, the overall uh, most important and uh, sizable impact on your day-to-day uh, -day finances. So, specifically today, I'd love to talk to you about the education planning portion of your uh, comprehensive financial plan. Um, basically, the two main parts in terms of, uh, number one, the twins' education, what we need to save at the end of each year for the next 14 years to be able to provide uh, $25,000 per child in, in today's dollars. Uh, to support their uh, future education needs. And number two, um, overall, Jeff, you've asked me that uh, we dive in and take a deeper look at what uh, costs we can anticipate for Ashley here in a few uh, uh, short five years uh, for her education, which will be contingent upon a few things that I'll dive into. So number one, um, the twins. Now, you both have expressed uh, you want to spend uh, save fifty thousand today's dollars. Uh, be able to uh, expect to um, manage and spend on the children for their education needs uh, in fourteen years. Um, I've taken a few assumptions into play. Number one, uh, we're going to anticipate a ten percent uh, rate of return for the education account. On uh, number two, I am going to assume a six percent growth in college. Um, expenses. Uh, we'll call that a college inflation rate. And uh, again, so we're sitting for 14 years. What do we need at the end of each year? So I've computed that at the end of each year for the next 14, combined between both Jeff Jr. and Emma, we're going to need to save $15,300 roughly. And um, give me a moment. I'll discuss Ashley's needs and then we'll dive into a little bit more of what kind of you know vehicles that will be appropriate for that. Um, so then moving on to Ashley, uh, Jeff, more, this is uh, more geared towards your uh, question with Ashley is, hey, what can I anticipate for costs at the end of the, um, uh, in a few years uh, for each year of her education? So what I'm going to do is I'll give you the three kind of overarching uh, options uh, in terms of education and then we'll go, I'll give you the first year versus the fourth to kind of just let you get a range and a feel for what that might look like. Um, so computing the future value for education costs, you know, again anticipating that six percent inflation, uh, a college college inflation rate, if you want to call it. Um, I have calculated that for a public in state, which is going to be our more most affordable option, she wants to stay home close to close to the parents here, um, you know, close to you, Jeff. I would say the uh, public in state is going to be 12,900 roughly for that first year going all the way up to about $15,400. Then you're looking at a public out of state school. Um, again, uh, this could be a little bit more expensive as you're not going to have that kind of um, you know preferential in state um, uh, education costs. So Public out of state, you're looking at thirty-three thousand three hundred dollars, roughly, all the way up to that year four, which will get us to thirty-nine thousand seven hundred. And then a private institution, um, you're looking at forty-four thousand eight hundred dollars that first year, all the way up to fifty-three thousand um, dollars, fifty-three thousand three hundred, roughly. So. Again, uh, that's going to be between you, Ashley, figure out a plan on what's going to be important to her, what kind of education she's looking for, what kind of programs are going to be important. And um, so uh, that should give you a reasonable uh, gauge as to uh, where the overarching uh, kind of wavelength uh, expenses are going to be. Now, 
most importantly, um, how are we going to save? Where are we going to save it? What kind of vehicles can we expect? Uh, the most suitable option here for us overall is going to be what we call a Section 529 plan. Um, here's why I like a 529, and here's why I think it's important to uh, assisting us, an important vehicle in assisting us to meet our financial goals here is, um, number one, uh, eligible contributions can be made regardless of the contributor's adjusted gross income. Um, so there's no... Um, no hindrance in terms of who can contribute. Um, 529's contribution amounts can vary anywhere between 100,000 and 250,000. You know, really depends on the state. We'd have to take a deeper look at your, what your state offers. Um, here's the big, the biggie. Um, here's what I love about the 529's. As long as the funds, as long as the assets are used for uh, qualified higher education expenses. They grow tax-free, and the withdrawals, again, if they are used for education expenses, um, come out tax-free as well. So that's the true beauty of a 529, and, um, you know, as we need to save quite a bit for both Jeff Jr. and Emma, um, you know, and even Ashley for whatever we determine with her, I would say that this is the most suitable option. Again, if... Um, one individual, say they don't use up their entire education uh, account, 529s can easily be transferable and rolled into um, one of the siblings. So, you know, if they can pursue, you know, a higher education, uh, I should say, uh, you know, a secondary or a master's degree, again, you know, some of these assets can be used for that purpose. Now, a couple other options for us would be what we call a Coverdell uh, education savings account and or, you know, an UPMA, UGMA account. You know, they certainly are vehicles that could be used for education expenses, but they're not the most feasible. Um, you know, Coverdells are, um, they, they qualify with the grow, the tax-free growth, the tax-free uh, the withdrawals, as long as they're used for educa you know, higher education expenses, and they can actually be used uh, through K through 12, which is nice, but um, there's only a $2,000 contribution limit um, Unfortunately, per beneficiary, so that certainly limits our, um, you know, our, our overall, uh, I should say, education egg and uh, that growth. So I don't think that is the most um, suitable recommendation. Then Alma Agma really doesn't have a designated education need or requirement. I should say it, it's generally just an irrevocable gift to the minor in which they can spend however they like. It, it ends up being in their name alone. And, and again, there's really no uh, advantage or tax privileges associated with that for using for education. So that would be out of a question unless we're maximizing the state's limit. And there's nowhere else to put the assets such as the 529 or even ESA. So, um, and again, Nancy, uh, I did want to touch the nice thing too, you know, you asked about commingling assets with your parents who have you know, mentioned they're interested in assisting with the twins' education. I would say commingling isn't necessary. It's also not allowed between individuals into a 529. What I'm going to say is it makes a little bit more sense if those contributions to the 529 are coming from each indirect um, contributor because what you can do with that is take advantage of the annual exclusion up to $14,000 a year in contributing to that 529. So... I would say commingling isn't necessary. Um, it is. We are more than uh, fortunate, it sounds like, to have the help of Bob and Darla uh, assist with the education planning. So, again, um, thank you both very much. Uh, I do appreciate your time today, um, and uh, we'll talk here soon in a couple weeks. So, thank you very much.